I've known uh, this morning's guest for um, for over 20 years, but I haven't seen him in what must be more than a decade. Now, I don't think he's been avoiding me. Um, at least I hope not. No, he's been sharing his considerable greenkeeping experience in a country that's not necessarily associated with golf, Russia. My guest this morning is Ken Seams, one of the best, most talented, most decorated course superintendents you'll find anywhere. And uh, he's just returned to Scotland, um, but he's launched a new company, Seams Turf Grass Limited. And uh, well, the first question would be is, Ken, how are you? I'm extremely well, thank you. And it's just nice to be home after, you know, almost do, doing a full circumnavigation of the world since I left Canada. Yeah. You know, because I've been, you know, my, I, I left Canada to go to the U to the UK to build the East Sussex National, then up to Scotland and been to Dubai, China, Russia, and now I'm home. And it, it feels good to be, be home now. Well, it's interesting that you regard Scotland as home and we're privileged that uh, you do regard Scotland as your home. Um, you have enjoyed such a, a stellar career, you've just mentioned, um, beyond the UK. I don't know about stellar, I just, I try hard. <laughs> I'm a trier. I try you've to enjoyed do my a best. career. Isn't it? You've enjoyed a career, um, an, an excellent career. You, you've you've hosted Solheim Cups. You've hosted Scottish Opens, and, and I kind of I can understand the desire to go and try and um, stretch your skills elsewhere. Um, but can you just explain what it was that uh, attracted you? I know you've been other places, but more latterly Russia. Can you just explain a little bit about what attracted you to um, uh, Russia as a job opportunity? Well, it was, I guess, a case of circumstances, Scott. I had no inclination in my, you know, thought process that I would work in Russia. And it happened when this opportunity came up when I was working in, in uh, China, in Beijing, and we were just through the growing process of building a real high-end Nicholas course with IMG was involved. And the course was starting to flood and it kept flooding and flooding. And this is after we had 14 holes grown in. And this was a high end Nicholas project called Jin High Lake. And um, once, the, once the golf course was in entirely, entirely underwater, I kind of started putting my feelers out about getting out of there. And, you know, luckily um, I got this call about a project in Moscow called Pestival Golf Club. Because, um, China does have a, a golfing reputation and a bit of a golfing heritage. Oh, yeah. Russia, um, you'll know differently, but Russia doesn't seem yeah. to, or didn't seem to have any golfing heritage. No, no. Or, uh, so I, so I, I flew out and had a look at this place, Pestival, and I went, you know, boy, this is sustainable. You know, it was already a, a um, nine-year-old golf course when I arrived, housing development, very high end. Um, there, there wouldn't be too many places like it. Um, you know, it's comparable to the finest golf courses you would find anywhere. And I think you would find that about most of the projects in Russia. I think in Moscow, there's three or four Jack Nicholas design projects, and they're all at a uber high level. The unfortunate thing is it's a game for the wealthy it's still in, in Moscow. I was going to ask that, the oligarchs and the, uh, and the elite. Yes, it's a, it's a very expensive game, um, but it is, um, you know, it's very high end. They want, they expect high standards. And so I went out there and looked at the place and I said, okay, this is doable. And it was at a point in my career when I needed to get my son back to Scotland for schooling for, so he could have enough years of high school to get into the universities here in, in Scotland. So we made the decision, pack up and, and go. And so I, I spent eight years in working in Moscow. And, and what a great place it was. Fantastic city, the people, everything, all the preconceived ideas were totally thrown out the window once I was there and spent time there because what, what, it really was a wonderful place to work. How was it with regard to um, knowledge levels of your staff and um, the budgets that you would have and sourcing materials and, and machinery? Yeah, that's all. Those are the, the complicated things about 
working away and, uh, and other people who, are, who have you know, worked abroad will find the certain similar problems, you know, trying to find good staff. Um, you know, none of my staff had played golf uh, or played golf or understood golf. So, you know, when I worked at Loch Lomond Golf Club, we probably had three or four guys on the crew who were, who were scratch or, or plus two players. So they all understood the game. Um, and, and the work attitude is different, especially working in, in China and um, Russia. There's a different mental side. So to succeed in these places, you have to have that right ter- type of personality. You have to be able to compromise a little bit and maybe accept things that you might not accept in other areas of the world, particularly in a, in a thriving golf environment like Britain or Canada or North America. So you have to learn to be pretty flexible <laughs> and you have to think outside the box. You know, when you're ordering things, you have to think well ahead. You know, you have to really plan ahead because you can't get parts super quick or you can't get certain products instantaneously. So you have to really be prepared, be organized, and, and be flexible. Was it, um, was it traditionally known machinery you were using or was it a uh, Russian brand? Yes. Name? Oh, yeah. yeah, there's, I mean, you know, there we had uh, Jacobson machinery. We had uh, uh, Toros available out there. Finally, John Deere were getting on board. and. And some things we imported from from Britain, um, but generally everything is available out there, but at a, at a price. <laughs> so. uh, I think you may have answered the question that I'm just about to pose to you, but it's just um, how do you do you feel you've added to your skill set by working in a place like Russia, where maybe standards are slightly different, and how do you think the additions to that skill set will improve you when you're back here in the UK? Well, I think I'm a, I'm a far more better people manager now. I'm, I, I, I look at people and how to manage people a lot differently than when I was working in Canada or Britain. I think um, I, I probably have more empathy now to people because, again, when you're working in these places, a lot of the staff have nothing. You know, it's, and, and at the same time, I say I have empathy for people, but at the same time, I, I'm very, when people start complaining about not having things, say in Britain or in Canada, then, then, I, then I look at those people and go, well, you, you don't really understand how lucky you are living in a place like Britain or, or Canada or the United States. And because a lot of these people living in Russia, living in, in China, the workers, you know, they, they're getting paid not very much money. Uh, they don't have a lot. And, uh, you know, I would have put my crew in Russia against any crew in the world oh, the, the, from the work ethic that I got out of them. They were prepared to work every hour of the day, um, not complaining and, and, and doing it with not a huge uh, in pocket benefit to them had they come from so, so i guess i guess to answer your question i, I think i look at things um, you know I, I take i take more time thinking about things and thinking about how to manage people um, i think my skill set is better in trying to uh, manage more for less you know you don't need to spend vast sums of money to have good quality turf you can do things very simplistic. Uh, you can, you know, I, I see it all the time, and it, and it bothers me a little bit to see the amount of waste I see in the golf course business. Mm, yeah, you know, yeah. money being spent frivolous, frivolously um, on things when there's really people don't look at the cost benefit enough. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things when I worked at Augusta National when I did my internship, Scott, back in 1983. You know, they had endless pockets of money, right? There's probably no wealthier golf club in the world. Uh, they get machinery. They get anything thrown at them. But I, I never worked at a place, or, or for, I guess it was probably the superintendent at the time, Billy Fuller, who looked at things so detailed. In other words, before they 
we're going to use a particular product, whether it's a mower or some, they, they just looked at it in such detail to make sure there was a real benefit to that product. So they, they got best value out of the money spent. Yeah. Yeah. Albeit they had endless money, they didn't waste money. Yeah.